Hi, I'm Father Joe. I recently heard a story about a doctor and a lawyer who were talking at a party. The uh, doctor said to the lawyer, you know, it's hard often for me to enjoy these parties because all these people come up and ask me medical questions and it drives me nuts. And the lawyer says, yeah, I used to have the same problem with everybody coming up and asking me legal questions. And the doctor says, well, what did you do about it? And he says, well, it's real simple. Anytime someone asks me questions, you know, about my business, I simply build them the next day and it quit. The doctor thinks that's a pretty good idea and he decides to try it. But he goes home from the party and the next morning he wakes up and goes to his mailbox to find a bill from the lawyer he talked to. Let's take a look at this question. We've got two questions. Dear Father Joe, I have a Protestant friend who tells me that we only have nine commandments and we leave out the commandment about idols. She showed me in her Bible how we left it out. Is that true? No, it's not true. It's a misunderstanding. Uh, the answer lies in how we format the Ten Commandments. What I need you to do is to grab your Bible and to turn to uh, Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. You know Exodus. It's after Genesis. Okay? Are you there? Exodus 21 to 17. Okay. Now, in the first part of the commandments, we see that there are two ideas. First, that we should worship God and God alone, and that we should not carve idols or worship them. Now, if we jump to verse 17, we see again two ideas. First, that we should not covet our neighbor's goods, and second, that we should not covet our neighbor's wife. So, an abbreviated version of the Ten Commandments looks like this. This is our ten. Some translations, like the one above, combine the first two commandments and split the last two. Others split the first two and join the last two. Now, some of our well-meaning Protestant brothers and sisters may have seen our list and wondered where the injunction against carving idols went. Now let's go to question number two. Dear Father Joe, why do we have statues in church if God says not to do it. All right. If the commandment forbids us from carving what they call graven images, why do we make statues in church? Let's go to the source once again. Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6 goes like this. Quote, You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or in the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow that down before them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And it goes on from there. So why do we make statues? Well, the commandment forbids the creation of images that we worship, but not the creation of holy images to help our worship of God. At times in the scripture, God commanded that people make images and pray to them. So for example, if you look at the book of Numbers, God has the Israelites create a bronze serpent, and he says that they should look up at it when they're bitten by serpents and be healed. Another example comes to us from David when he was building the temple. According to the Bible, God gave David explicit instructions, which included the creation of statues of angels. In the second example, God is explaining how to decorate the tent of the Lord's presence. Here's what it says. And you shall make two cherubim of gold, that's two gold statues of angels, of hammered work you shall make them on two ends of the mercy seat. That's a part of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, also, we can take a look at Ezekiel 14, or excuse me, Ezekiel 41, verses 17 to 18, and hear God telling them to create images for the future temple. God gives Ezekiel a vision and describes the wall of the temple as having angels carved on it. Regarding the saints, it's pretty simple for us. We believe saints are people, like us, who in their lifetime achieved an extraordinary level of holiness. They're people we're sure are in heaven. We ask them for prayers, just like we ask our friends, because we believe in the resurrection of the dead. We believe that they're in God's presence, fully alive, and that we can ask them to pray for us. We are physical creatures. It helps us to have a physical image to see those saints and to remind us to ask them to pray for us. 
I could keep going, but you get the idea. God understands we are physical beings who need physical signs. In the same way that you and I carry around pictures of our loved ones, we need to carry in our hearts the images of the holy men and women who've gone before us. So go to your church. See the statues. Thank God for the men and women who inspire us. For a great site on how to defend the faith, I highly recommend www.catholic.com. It rocks. Great information on there. So let's remember our saints and ask for their prayers. Enjoy another day in God's presence. <laughs>